Today I have a brand new Lenovo Flex 5. It's an IdeaPad Flex 5, 2-in-1, 14-inch touchscreen. Today I'm going to do some upgrading and cloning on it. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get started. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have a brand new Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5. It's a 14-inch 2-in-1. Nice little laptop. Pretty snappy. It's got the Ryzen 5, AMD Ryzen 5 4500U processor in it. It's a touch screen, of course. Um, it comes, it ships. It's brand new. Just took it out of the box for the customer. I'm going to do a little upgrading on it. But it comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 memory and it has a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Well, the customer wants a larger SSD, so I'm going to upgrade the one that's in there to a one terabyte. But I am going to clone onto this one to show you how to clone. I'm going to use the free Macrium Reflect 7. It's free and it does a pretty good job. And there's no data on here yet. It's just a clean, well, a factory Windows install. I have updated the updated it to the 2004 edition of Windows 10, so that's already done. So I'm going to do the clone. Um, like I said, it's a nice little laptop or two-in-one. has a backlit keyboard, fingerprint scanner. Uh, it's got a three-cell battery. It is a 14-inch full 1080p IPS display. It's got a pretty nice-looking display on it. Of course, the camera, this one even has the privacy switch on it, which is kind of nice, so you can block the camera. And you don't have to put a Band-Aid on it. So, the first thing I'm going to do, what I like to do is I, I have an adapter here that plugs right into the USB. Now this particular adapter comes with a USB-C adapter as well. And I'm going to use this one. Now on this model here of this IdeaPad Flex 5, the, the, the charging cord here charges through the USB-C port, but you can still use a traditional charging cord to the DC jack right here. This is our, your C port. But if you just want to use a, a regular Lenovo charging cord like this, you can. But this one comes with the C port charging cord. So I got the battery already charged. But I am going to plug it in during this cloning just in case. <clears throat> and on this side, you got your SD card slot, two USB 3.1 ports there, and your power switch. It's a very, very nice little laptop. Pretty good, pretty good battery life, according to Lenovo, of about 8 10 hours. So I got this adapter and I'll have links down below where you can get this and the drive that I'm using and stuff like that. So all you got to do with this NVMe, it's a PCI Express, uh, it's a Gen 3 times 4 This adapter supports that it just plugs in and there's no screws, <coughs> screws that snaps right down over that little rubber holder right there. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my USB port here and just kind of leave it lay here. But this, this particular adapter can be used as a regular enclosure. You can slide that right into this tube here and you got a little external NVMe drive. But I like to use it for cloning. It works really good and it supports all the, all the new drives. So having said all that, first thing I'm going to do is open up my Macrium Reflex 7. Now when to, I am connected to the internet by the way. I'm going to open up the new Edge browser here. Oh, actually, I got a shortcut right here. If you just go to macrium.com, I'll have a link down below where you can get this. You just go to their their website to Reflect Free, and just scroll on down here, and you can click on right here where it says Home Use. You download it and you install it. And during the install, or at the end, it'll ask you if you want to register. You can opt out of that, and it'll still work, and you'll be fine. So that's that. So here's the shortcut. Let's open it up. Got our drive hooked up. All right. That's what that is. That's all right. So this is our current drive right here, and this is our one terabyte down here. Our whoops, our Western Digital. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go up here and click on the, the drive that's currently in there, the 250, um, 256. And I'm going to click right below it here where it says clone disk. So I'm going to clone that one. And then we're going to select a disk to clone, which is the one in the USB port. And it's right here. 
choose that. I'm going to delete this existing partition. That's probably something I did. I'm just going to delete that. So there. Now we got a better drive. So what you do on this, the C partition is the most important one. We want that as large as possible. But there's a partition after it, so we're going to have to resize that. So what you can do is click on these right here. Just click and drag it right down. Just click. So I'll drag it down. Click on this one. Drag it down. We want to keep these partitions oops, all the same. And then the C. But we don't want to put this down there because this is only about a gigabyte partition with the wind tools on it. So what we're going to do is for this one here, I'm going to select it and click on cloned partition properties. And this is our, our C drive. So I'm going to make this big. I'm going to drag it, click and drag this little bar here. And I'm going to leave very little room down there. So what I'm going to do, so for the free space down here, oops, God, it's a touch screen. I'm going to change on free space. I'm going to go to megabytes. And I'm going to put in, actually, I'm going to put in about 120 megabytes. Let me see. 1,000 megabytes. All right. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, guys. i got to make that a little bigger. That's a gigabyte. Not, oh, my bad. So let's make this. You can see what I'm doing here, free space. I'm just going to put in one gigabyte and hit OK. Now I'm going to go up here and click it down here and it should max out the drive there. And we've got 24.7 megabytes left. Let's go here. I'm going to stretch it out here. So hopefully you can see how I'm doing that. It's pretty simple. So now we got our big partition on our C drive there, which is good. That's the way we want it. Now we're just going to hit click on next right here. And we're just going to hit next here. And this is just the layout of all the partitions it's showing you here. And I'm going to click on finish. And this is just going to make backups, your XML file. Just leave all that the way it is. You can change the backup location or definition if you want. But let's just click OK. And now you can see the clone has started. This entire cloning process shouldn't take too long because there's no actual, you know, data and files and pictures and music and all that stuff on there. These usually go pretty quick with just a Windows install being on there. But I'm going to let this overall progress get started here. And when it's almost done, I'm going to come back so you can see how it ends. So we're going to get it started. You can see it's going pretty good already. So I don't want to bore you with all this. I'll be back in just a second, guys. All right, guys, you can see it's just about done over here. It's only taking a couple of minutes. Boom, there's our windows. Okay, that looks good. Label got copied and everything. Clone completed. Did not take long at all. And close it out. Exit our program. Just for the heck of it. We'll go over here. And there's our two drives. There's a new one, the one we just cloned onto. I'm going to put that in place of the 256. So let me go ahead and shut the computer down. We can unplug our drive over here. And guys, there's a, I'm going to have a link down below where you can get this particular adapter. It's not real cheap, but I use it a lot. You're probably going to get one and maybe use it once and not use it again, or you can loan it to a friend. There are a lot of different types of these, but you got to make sure when you buy these uh, adapters for these PCI Express M.2 drives that you get one that's going to be compatible with the Gen 3 times 4 PCI Express. There are some I've seen out there that are Gen 3 times 2, or they got the both the M and the B key. You want to make sure you get one that's going to work for your drive. Okay. Um, there are some really cheap ones out there. I spent a couple extra bucks and get a good one But this one I've been real happy with I got other ones I use but I like this one the best. So there's our freshly Installed drive or drive that we cloned on to I'm going to disconnect the power cable here guys Get that out of the way now on this model I just want to talk about the screws for a minute on these. I've already removed the screws they want to bore you taking out the screws. However, these screws are not Phillips head. They're a Torx 
they're uh, they, they got the Torx head on them like this. It's a it's a T6 or a number six Torx they call it. They come in different. You know, you got one here that's really nice. Here you got these little quarter inch ones that you can put into a cordless screwdriver or a quarter inch nut driver if you want. Here's a here's a shorter one, but these are all it's a T6. You do not want to strip out the heads of these torque screws. If you do, you're not going to be a happy camper. Then you got to drill them out and it's a whole mess. So make sure you get a good number six Torx bit to get these screws out. And there are, on this one here, there's two different lengths. These four screws across the front are real short. You can see I got them laid out over here. And then the other remaining, remaining screws are quite a bit longer. So make sure you put the right screws back in the right hole. All right, so I've already done that. Just make sure you got a good torch driver to take these out. Um, I just hate to see you get them stripped or anything like that. So once you do that, I use a plastic spudger tool like this. And these pans pop off pretty easy, if I remember right. I got these plastic spudgers I use. Um, they're a dime a dozen on, on Amazon. I'll have a link down below where you can order a pack of these for a couple of bucks. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to start in one of my seams here. You can see it goes in quite easily. I've already already got it broken loose there without hardly any effort at all. And just be conscious that you have a touch screen on the other side. You don't want to be pressing down too hard on it. And my bench tops are all padded. They're anti-static. They're built for this type of work. I can slide them around all I want. I'm not going to scratch a thing. They're very they're very protective of my computers that I'm working on. I've had people leave comments like, I can't believe you're sliding that laptop around on that bench like that. Well, it's not metal. I didn't throw sandpaper on here, so it's gonna, it does a good job for me. You can see how easy that lifts off. But just take your time with it if you've never done this before. So, this model has 16 gigs of DDR4 2400 memory on board. It's right here. They have it covered up with protective heat tape. We're going to leave that alone. We can't add more memory to this. It's got 16 gigs. It should be plenty for a two-in-one. Here's our M.2 drive over here. I'm going to take take this out. This is an adapter bracket because this will accept a different size. In our case, we're putting in a 2280. Um, and now before I do anything, I'm going to disconnect the battery real quick. It's right here. I'm going to slide this plug out. It slides back towards the battery. So let me get my little plastic tool. I just want to make sure that we don't try something. It's kind of hard to see, guys. But you got to take your time pulling these out. They're a little stubborn sometimes. They don't give you a lot to work with here. <clears throat> Just be careful. There's a little tiny little lip along here. You can barely get a hold of with your little pointy tool. Just don't <clears throat> I got it started. It's coming. That's just me clicking with my plastic here. I'm not hurting anything. But you can see that battery. They don't give you a lot of extra cable there. If you want to go to the trouble and remove the screws to take the battery out completely, there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, then you can, and there's one over here. And you got their little warranty thing on it. So as far as warranty, guys, you know, check with the as long as you don't damage anything, you should be okay. But when we do what we do, been doing this for 25 years, we assume all responsibility for warranties, you know, on our upgrades because we open up a lot of brand new computers to do upgrades right out of the box. So if the customer ever has a problem, we take care of it. So there, we got our battery disconnected. I'm going to take a number one Phillips screwdriver over here. I'm sorry, it's a number zero. My bad, number zero. I'm going to take out this Phillips screw right here. Carefully. And make sure you have one with a good med egg tip so you're not dropping screws on here. And then this is just, you see I'm just going to carefully lift it up and slide it out. This is an SK Hynix drive. They're not bad. But we're going to put it in Western Digital. You said it's a Gen 3 times 4 NVMe PCI Express drive. I'll put it back in the slot. Line it up there to put our screw in. Let me 
I just want to check something here real quick. I got a little, there's a piece of protective tape on here, so you don't have to worry about, I guess I don't need that. The back of your drive here, there's no circuitry on the back side of this PCI Express MBM E drive, excuse me. So it just lays down there nice and flat. Kind of clicks into place and get my screw. But yeah, they don't give you a memory expansion slot in this particular model. It is what it is, 16 gigs, DDR4-2400. But the only other thing you could upgrade in here is a Wi-Fi card to a Wi-Fi 6 or an AX card if you wanted to do that. Uh, that's about it. So now I'm going to reconnect my battery here. We've got our drive in there. Like I said, there's not a lot of room to maneuver in here. So don't force this. It's going to slide right in when you got it lined up right. Be sure it goes in out of the way. Careful of the little wires. Don't want to booger those up. I'm using the edge of, my, whoop, edge of my fingernail. Make sure it gets in out of the way. So you want it all the way in, just like that, right up to that little white dot that they have on it right there. Okay? So, let's put our bottom pan back on. Everything looks good. Decent cooling system here as well. These AMDs tend to run a little on the warmer side sometimes. They do have a little bit of fan noise. It's not too bad, but it is kind of noticeable if it's dead quiet where you're working. So I'm going to put the screws back in once I know everything's good with my number six Torx driver here, or T6, they call it. So let's whoop, get it open back up here. Power switch is right on the side here. We'll see what happens guys so now we got a nice little upgrade from a 256 ssd to the one terabyte read that new drive There we go. It's booting up now. And don't panic if it don't pulse right away. It'll do this when you add memory or any new components. The BIOS has got to read it and figure out what it is. Get it set up for you. But there, look at that. We got a good clone. So let's go to our file explorer real quick. There's our new Windows SSD. Got a whole terabyte now. They want to, they're, they're going to be storing a lot of pictures, probably some videos on here, they said. They're going to take this out and about. So there. We've got a good clone using the Macrium Reflex 7 free cloning software. It's fairly simple to use. Um, that's okay. So there, that's about it, guys. Um, make sure you check out more of my videos. Don't forget to subscribe, and I appreciate watching. Um, Y'all have a great day.